Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I want to discuss car batteries. More specifically, we're going to talk about the lead acid batteries that you find in gasoline vehicles. I'll touch briefly, however, on lithium ion battery packs, which are found in electric vehicles. But today's primary focus is the lead acid battery. And I want to discuss how you can maintain your battery to keep it lasting longer, why batteries aren't necessarily lasting as long as they used to, and I also have an all new product that will be featured on our website. I'll go over that later in today's video, something to always keep on hand. So we're going to start off today's video with what batteries are made of and how they work. So we're going to start off with the lead acid battery, which is the most common battery as I mentioned. It's in 98.8% .8 of vehicles that are out on the road, and it was also invented back in 1860. These are made up of alternating plates of lead, the anode, lead oxide, the cathode, and then it's submerged in a bath of sulfuric acid electrolyte or battery acid as we all know. Each cell holds 2.1 volts and car batteries are made up of six cells. So your typical 12 volt battery actually holds 12.6 volts. Lead acid batteries also contain metallic lead, lead dioxide, lead sulfate, and sulfuric acid. The negative electrodes are made up of metallic lead, also containing minor fractions of calcium, tin, and anatomy. The positive electrodes are made up of lead oxides in various compositions. Now, the materials used for these storage cells are lead peroxide, sponge lead, and dilute sulfuric acid. The positive plate of lead acid battery is made up of PBO2, which is dark brown, brittle hard substance and the negative plate of lead acid battery is made up of pure lead, which is in a soft sponge condition. And lead batteries usually contain between 17 and 21 pounds of lead. Now, as we move over to the lithium ion battery pack now, which I'm calling the secondary battery, these are largely consisted of four main components. We have the cathode, anode, electrolyte, and separator. So some similar compounds to the lead acid battery. Now the cathode of a typical lithium ion battery cell is a thin layer of goo containing microscale crystals, which are often similar in structure to minerals that occur naturally in Earth's crust or mantle, such as olivines or spindles. Now the crystals pair up negatively charged oxygen with positively charged lithium and various other metals. In most electric vehicles, it's a mix of nickel, manganese, and cobalt. Recharging a battery rips lithium ions out of these oxide crystals and pulls the ions to a graphite based anode where they are stored and basically they're sandwiched between layers of carbon atoms. Now lithium ion cells generate electricity when lithium ion flows from the anoid through the electrolyte to the cathode forcing electrons to flow around an outside circuit and then charging reverses this process. Now lithium ion battery packs usually contain around 9 pounds of lithium, however they are significantly larger than the battery that you find in a gasoline vehicle. Usually right around 40 pounds is the average weight, in an electric vehicle it's around 1000 pounds. So there's a lot more components that make up an electric battery and all of the structure that's composed and within the structure of the actual car. And then if you dismantle or remove an electric battery improperly, they can unfortunately explode or ignite. So for the lithium ion, the battery can eventually hit temperatures of more than 1000 degrees. At that point, the flammable electrolyte can ignite or even explode when exposed to oxygen in the air. Not very common at all. A crash or an accident can trigger that, however, or there can be a fault in the wiring that can also cause that. Same with a gasoline powered battery as well. On a lead acid battery, it can also explode as well due to overcharging and gassing. And when the percentage of hydrogen gas evolved exceeds 4% by volume, oxygen and air form an explosive mixture with 4% of hydrogen. Hydrogen is an odorless, colorless, and highly flammable gas. So you do have risks to both of these just to point those out. And it's much easier to replace a gas powered vehicle's battery, very simple and quick to do versus a lithium ion battery pack in an electric vehicle. And now we're going to move on to how these batteries work. We're going to start off with the lead acid battery. So when you switch on your vehicle's ignition via the key or push button, it signals the car battery to start a lead acid chemical reaction. This delivers a short burst of electric energy that enables the starter motor to crank the engine. The amount of electric potential in your car's battery is called voltage, and most vehicles use a 12 volt battery like I mentioned earlier. Even a small decrease in the voltage will have a big effect on your battery's performance. Once the engine is running though, the vehicle's charging system will take over. At the heart of the charging system is your alternator, 
which maintains your battery charge. When a battery dies, it means the voltage has been depleted and it is not being recharged. So it could be a number of things. Your alternator could be dying or your battery just doesn't have enough charge. Your vehicle hasn't been driven enough. So we're going to move on to how to maintain your battery now to keep that voltage right around where it should be. So that way your car can start every time you hop in it. So to maintain a car battery, usually a car battery lasts anywhere between three and five years. Now in my personal experience, I've had car batteries last around eight years before, but lately my batteries haven't been lasting quite as long. We're gonna use my Toyota Tacoma as an example. This is a 2017. I've had three batteries in this vehicle since I bought it brand new. The original battery lasted just over two years. I replaced that with another battery that lasted just over two years as well. And I'm currently on my third battery. And I'll show you the second battery that I put in this vehicle. Once I hopped in the truck and it did not start, opened the hood and this is what I found. There was corrosion starting to go around both of the uh, positive and negative terminals, which obviously means that the battery is leaking acid and it has lost its charge. It is pretty much a dead battery. And in my personal experience, the Tacoma that I owned before this, the original OEM battery lasted eight years. Right after the eight year mark, I put in a second battery and I sold the truck after that, so I don't know how long that battery lasted. I think it's pretty crazy to see that batteries, at least in my experience, are just not lasting as long as they used to, especially being on battery number three for my 2017 Tacoma. Now, in order to maintain your batteries and help keep them lasting, longer than the two year mark, you can buy what's called a battery tender. I've used one on my motorcycle ever since I got my bike because that is something that I don't ride as much as my vehicles since obviously it's not as practical, still fun to drive though or ride. Um, so I got a battery tender for my motorcycle and now I recently bought a battery tender for my vehicles. My brother also uses one for his GTR and he hasn't had to replace the battery in that car for the last four years. So that is something that I highly recommend you can quickly plug that into an outlet in your garage and keep your vehicle charging on the battery tender while it's not in use. I'll have a link to that product down in the description below, both for a motorcycle and one that is designed for a car. So if you're interested in using those, I highly recommend them. Definitely check them out. It can significantly help keep your battery in tip top shape. Now on my motorcycle, the first couple of batteries I went through only lasted a few months. And I think that was because it was during the winter season very cold weather, I wasn't riding the bike much, and the battery just died very quickly. After using the battery tender, I believe my second battery is almost four years old, so I've had that for a long period of time using the battery tender every single day. And then some maintenance on your batteries just to keep an eye on them. You need to make sure that your battery stays clean. Check periodically, anytime you're under the hood, changing your oil, adding fluids, Definitely keep an eye on the battery. Make sure all the wiring is intact. There's no corrosion. There hasn't been maybe animals under there eating or chewing wires. There's nothing frayed or anything like that. And if your car has been sitting a lot, use that battery tender like I just mentioned. And then just to touch briefly on modified vehicles. So if my Tacoma has a lot of lights on it, I have a lot of aftermarket lighting, I have underglow lights, I have compressors. There's a lot that that battery is drained for in using the compressor and all of those. So if you have a highly modified vehicle, maybe look into a dual battery setup, which is something I haven't done yet, but I possibly might wanna do that at some point in the future. So you can use one battery for all those components, one battery for the actual vehicle. That's a whole nother story, uh, but if you have a vehicle like that, maybe using a battery tender can also be very beneficial. And now moving on to how you know your battery is dying, it's dead, or it's on its way out. The number one reason is leaving lights on. So if you leave dome lights on, you leave your headlights on overnight, for a small light, it can actually drain a lot of the battery where you wake up in the morning and none of the lights are on and your car doesn't start. So always make sure that you turn off all of your lights. There could be a charging system failure, just something that you haven't planned for, something within the computer system, just drained power from the battery and it's not going to start. You can expose it to extreme temperatures. Like I mentioned with my motorcycle battery, it's a much smaller battery, so in colder conditions, 20, 30 degrees, something like that. It's a little bit extreme for the size of battery, which is something that drained it very, very quickly. There's corrosion or loose battery terminal connections that, I, like I mentioned earlier, you need to keep an eye on. If the battery is old or in poor condition, that is obviously a sign that it is wearing out and it needs to be replaced. Or if you leave your car parked for an extended amount of time, 
I read that if you tr at least start your car once a week, that can be good just to charge the battery. If you take it around the block, I feel like you should drive it a little bit more than once a week. If you are driving it once a week, use that battery tender just to give it a little bit more juice. And then signs that your battery is actually dead, the engine won't crank, the engine slowly cranks, there's no lights, or there, even the radio doesn't work. None of the electronics will come on obviously means that your battery is dead. And if your battery has made it to the point where it will not start whatsoever, you need a mobile jumper just like this. This product is from LastFit. I'll have it both on their website and we carry it on our website down in the description below. This has a 12 volt or a 24 volt, just depending on the battery that you have. It will jump gasoline vehicles as well as diesel vehicles as well. And I bought one for myself after my Tacoma battery died. So that way I don't have to rely on another vehicle. I can quickly jumpstart my vehicle. That way I can get it to the local auto parts store and replace it as needed. You also have the battery tender, which I mentioned earlier, to help keep that battery lasting longer. But this is always nice to use. You can help other people as well if they need a jump too. So I hope you enjoyed today's video talking about car batteries. I have found too that car batteries today are being made with less and less lead than previous years. I think batteries internally are getting a little bit cheaper, not lasting as long. So that way you have to replace them every so often compared to, like I said, with my other Tacoma lasting eight years. Now I think you can try to get close to that with the techniques that I mentioned in today's video, but that's just how batteries are being made now. I hope you enjoyed today's video and found it to be helpful. Give it a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it and consider smashing that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.